Hey, Carl Jackson here for Wealth Protection Research. At the very heart of our democracy lies a principle we hold sacred, free speech. It's the cornerstone that supports every freedom we cherish. Yet, in today's digital age, discussions about our wealth, our rights, and our future are being silenced or overshadowed in mainstream narratives, leaving many feeling voiceless in conversations that are crucial to our financial independence and security. This is where wealth protection research steps in, armed with a mission that's never been more critical. Wealth protection research is not a financial advisory firm. They are defenders of free speech, committed to giving a voice to the silence. Wealth protection research tirelessly seeks out financial experts. These are the voices that challenge prevailing narratives, especially as we navigate the uncertainties of the 2024 election. Wealth Protection Research has created a 2024 election wealth protection report. This free report highlights the three best ideas for protecting and growing your money heading into the 2024 election. It contains ideas that mainstream media won't touch and listeners can get it completely free. All you have to do is text the word IDEAS, I-D-E-A-S, to 76626 to claim your free copy. If you believe in the sanctity of free speech and the importance of financial freedom, then act now. Text IDEAS, I-D-E-A-S, to 76626 to claim your free copy of this 2024 election protection report. It's time to widen the scope of what we're told, to hear the ideas the establishment does not think you can handle, and to take control of our financial destinies. Again, text IDEAS to 76626 to claim your free copy. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show. I'm joined by my guest, General Michael Flynn. He's here to promote his new documentary. You guys are going to want to check this out. Uh, and it is entitled, the movie, it, the movie is entitled Flynn, Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost, Details How the Deep State Went After Flynn, uh, uh, deep, I'm sorry, Whatever the Cost. General Flynn, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you've got a damn packed schedule. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, absolutely, Carl. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, we're on the road right now. I'm actually riding shotgun in an RV that uh, we're driving across the country. And the movie, uh, we've been in four cities. We're going to 35 total cities. So we've already knocked out four. Uh, Venice, Florida, uh, wow. uh, Winter Haven, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, Greer, South Carolina. And tonight we're going to be in Nashville. And uh, it's been pretty much pretty much sold out to, at each place. I mean, and we're, and we're just, you know, we're sort of, you know, hoping as we go, people are showing up, man. We had 850 the first night. We had 450 the next day. The last last uh, couple of nights we've had over 200. We got over 200, maybe closer to 300 tonight in Nashville. Uh, it, it, so it's really exciting. It's humbling, very humbling. The movie feedback that we've gotten so far, we're posting a lot of stuff on, of course, social media and various out, other outlets. Uh, on our website, FlynnMovie.com. People can go to FlynnMovie.com. And uh, just the, the testimonials and the response from people has been just extraordinary and much, much, much uh, 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 more powerful than I even I imagined it, it would be because the movie is really an impactful movie, especially right now with everything that's going on uh, in our country. Um, you know, it really tells the story of sort of why me – and, and then what happened, and I get into, like the, like the subtitle says, deliver the truth, whatever the cost. Whether, whether you agree with Mike Flynn or not, you know, I, what, what, you're, what you will see in this movie is, uh, you know, is really powerful. And we get into, the, we get into issues like uh, inside the White House. Uh, we get into issues about the endless wars and why we have these endless wars. I, I talk a little bit about the... Um, I talk a little bit about the, the assassinations of the 60s, that, that we probably have to do another assessment of those, and I, I, I specifically address those. Um, and then, of course, the persecution that I went through with the Department of Justice. And at the end, the Carl, and I think for your audience, you know, your great audience, at the end, we, we, uh, we leave a signal of hope. Where do we find hope? 
because I think that's what really people are looking for right now, because, you know, you know, Carl, I mean, no, nobody in this country can look at what's happening and go, oh, yeah, everything's rosy. It's, it is not. We're, we're in the midst of World War Three. Uh, we got a, a, you know, beyond a border invasion. It's a every city and every state in this country. I mean, we were just in in, uh, in Greer, South Carolina last night, um, and and it, and we had some law enforcement that were there, you know, with us, and and uh, they were great talking. And we, were, I always ask about how things in your county, and man, they got they got illegals in 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 South Carolina. We were in Savannah. There's illegals all over Savannah. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We're talking well, about. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, no, no, no. I, I honestly, I see it here. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in Orlando, Florida. I hate that I miss you, honestly, but I'm, I'm here in Orlando, Florida, and you can see. I mean, I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and frankly, you would see, uh, you know, oftentimes illegals that were set out on corners selling goods, whether it be fruit, whether it be, uh, you know, peanuts, whether it be flowers. I'm starting to see the same thing here. I can leave my neighborhood, and I can see it. It's absolutely, it's absolutely insane. Uh, and for those of you, again, uh, that are listening, I'm talking to General Michael Flynn. Uh, the name of the new document, a, a new documentary is Flynn Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost. You can get it at FlynnMovie.com. That's F-L-Y-N-N Movie.com. Uh, General Flynn, if, if you don't mind, I have to ask you some questions here. First and foremost, sure, I have to ask you if you are a man of faith, because frankly, I can't imagine going through what you went through. Uh, with the DOJ, and 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 I got, I, I'll just be honest with you, General. I I am, I am terrified to go through a situation like you just endured. Yeah, and and uh, so to answer your question, and and I address this specifically in the movie, and people will be introduced to my family. I come from uh, nine brothers and sisters. Okay, we're we're a Irish family from the Northeast. You know, we grew up in the state of Rhode Island primarily. Of course, I spent, you know, three and a half decades in the military. But we were, you know, we were you know, lower middle class, right? I mean, my father was a sergeant in the Army uh, when, when uh, we had seven brothers and sisters. When we moved back, we finally moved back home after he retired from the Army as a sergeant. He went to work in a bank as a teller, you know, and my mom was was making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and macaroni and cheese. I'd say in the movie that really how I found my faith again, how I renewed my faith, because I was a faith-based person. I found my faith in my family, because I'm not one to wear it on my sleeve. And, you know, I, I, I'm a soldier at heart. I, you know, I was brought up to be a, a soldier. Yes, my father was a soldier. My grand, both my grandfathers were, were uh, they served in the military, one in the Navy, one in the Army, World War One and World War II. I mean, my family is a family of soldiers, and, and uh, that's our legacy. And so we're always, you know, there's no atheist in a foxhole. So I found my faith. I strengthened, renewed my faith through my family during this time. And, it, and, and uh, it's very powerful. That part of the movie, I think, for many people, when they see it and they hear it, it's a very uh, emotional part. And, and that's a big, that's a big uh, takeaway. Uh, as we, you know, after last night, and we've been doing this every night after – after last night, I was, I'm always out there with the audience. I love people. Uh, I, 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 you know, meet them, take photos and stuff. And, and I'd ask them, you know, so what, what impacted you the most? And they would, they would talk about that. And they would talk about how, how they always believed, you know, in, in certain parts of who we were as a nation. But they all, the other aspect is, is it hmm. renewed their sense of hope and it renewed their sense of, I would just sort of, sort, sort of say getting back engaged in our country, in their communities. You know, I use this phrase, local action equals a national <laughs> impact. And, and uh, you know, guys like me have a national and an international platform, and I'm humbled by that. But uh, all of us have a duty now uh, to serve this country. You know, I, whether you served in the military or not, yeah. it's great. I love that. I love, I love people <laughs> who served in the military. You know, I always, I always praise them and give them a hug, but uh, all of us now must serve our nation in a different capacity, because if we don't, we're going to, we're going to lose this nation. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, General, and again, I'm speaking to General Michael Flynn. Go out and check out the movie, FlynnMovie.com. Flynn, deliver the truth, whatever the cost. We only have about two and a half minutes left in this block. 
Um, the General Flynn is going to stay with us for a couple of blocks here. Uh, but General, we, we talked about the military industrial complex. Are you concerned, um, or at least you, you mentioned it briefly, uh, are, are you concerned about where the military seems to be today? I mean, it, it, it is fascinating to me that the military seems to be, um, instead of independent, if you will, I mean, the military has gone has gone woke while you were serving in the military. I mean, literally, it seemed to me uh, that some of the leadership turned against you. Uh, should should we be concerned about our military? Is there hope for our military? Yeah, there's always hope, right? There's always hope. I do address specifically the different complexes in our government in the movie. And I talk specifically to that because I want people to understand who and what uh, is, it, you know, sort of pulls the, the strings in our country. You know, the, the, we talk about the deep state and people say Flynn knows where the bodies are buried. So, yes, I talk specifically about <laughs> right. this, this, this issue. And I think that that's a fascinating uh, uh, component right. of the movie. I am concerned about our, you know, the other aspect of what you're asking about. I think what it comes down to, Carl, is it comes down to trust. Does, do the moms and dads of our country yeah. trust the military, particularly the uniform military, to lead their sons and daughters, to lead our sons and daughters, you know, into into conflict? Because we're in this period of endless war. And I actually speak to the idea of endless wars right. in the movie. And why? Why do we have these endless wars? And I speak specifically to that. So trust, trust. You, you know, we're going to hear things out of the out of the Department of Defense, out of the military about, you know, the obesity rates and we can't recruit because, you know, kids can't pass a PT, a physical fitness test. No, it, 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 a, a, a young person can be trained to do anything. Right. And, and not that not that people that come into come into the military are monkeys. But, you know, like they always say, you can train, a, you know, you can train a monkey to do that. Right. I mean, we can we can take a young person right, and right. train them to be anything. That's. You know, be all you can be, right? Uh, um, but right, right, right now, we have a, a breakdown of trust. We have a breakdown of trust. So I know, I know we're getting to a hard break. Trust is the most key element in the military and the armed forces. Our soldiers have to trust their leaders, and I think that there's a breakdown of trust right now, and that 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 really bothers me. And I hope that we can rebuild that under a new set of, of leaders. Line. All right. I'm speaking to General Michael Flynn. We'll be right back with more in this interview with General Michael Flynn. Stay tuned. All right. So you may have heard that Mike Lindell and MyPillow no longer have the support of the big box stores. They've been uh, trying to destroy his company and him, quite frankly. Uh, they've been part of this cancel culture that's been aimed at them. So here's what's happening. They want to pass the savings directly on to you uh, by having a $25 extravaganza. When Mike started MyPillow, it was just a one product company with the help of his dedicated employees. They now have hundreds of products, uh, some you may not even know about. So to get the word out, I want to invite you, my listeners, to check out their $25 extravaganza. This is insane. You get a two-pack multi-use MyPillows, just $25, or the MyPillow sandals are just $25. Their six-pack towel sets are just $25. Brand new four-pack dish towels, you guessed it, just $25. Bucks. For the first time ever, the premium MyPillows with all new Giza fabric, just $25. Orders over $75 will receive free shipping too. All you have to do to take advantage of this amazing offer is go to MyPillow.com and use the promo code CARL. That is C-A-R-L. Use the promo code CARL or give them a call at 800-858-0263. Again, 800-858-0263. Promo code Carl, C-A-R-L. We don't spell it like the commie. All right. Thank you. All 
All right, welcome back to the Carl Jackson Show. And again, I'm joined by my guest, General Michael Flynn. He's out with a new movie. You can check it out, FlynnMovie.com. Also, he's traveling right now, as you can see. Uh, and here he is literally on the road in an RV, and he took the time uh, to join us. Check out the movie, Flynn, Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost. We'll get right to the questions here. It, 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 we, You were the NSA director for uh, President Trump. That was short-lived. Uh, the deep state obviously went after you. Uh, why is it that they fear you? You also worked in the Obama administration. Uh, it, Obama said it would take 25 years to take out ISIS. Uh, President Trump comes in to office, and it's only a matter of short order uh, before we annihilate ISIS. But, but you were in between. You worked for both presidents. Talk to us about the difference. Uh, uh, talk to us about the difference with the presidents between Obama and between former President Trump, and why is it that the left felt like they needed to go after you specifically? Yeah. So, and I talk. I talk specific to this question. In fact, I answer this question in the film, which is a really, it's a really powerful component of it because I was actually appointed by Barack Obama twice for two different really critical jobs. One was to be the head of one of the largest intel agencies in the world. That's the Defense Intelligence Agency. Everybody knows the CIA, but few don't, few know the DIA. And I was then appointed by, and, and, and fully confirmed by the Senate. And then I was appointed by Trump to be the National Security Advisor. When you say NSA, that's the National Security Advisor. And and so, you know, ISIS is a really critical uh, element and a, and a critical part of this story, the film, uh, you know, when I say, you know, there's a, there's a phrase, who knows where the bodies are buried that I mentioned on the first hit. The, this idea of ISIS, during the administration, there was a time when, when the Obama administration wanted uh, the, the narrative to be ISIS was on the run. You know, that, uh, remember, bin Laden's dead, ISIS is on the right. run, Al-Qaeda's on the run. So I talked specifically to that. And in fact, that's part of what I, uh, what I knew and, and, you know, as a guy that serves in the military, I have a certain set of responsibilities. And, and it's just like the move, the title of the movie, Deliver the Truth, right? You, uh, you have to deliver the truth no matter the cost. And, and of course, it costs me delivering the truth. And I, I specifically talked to that in the movie. And I'll tease that there because I want people to go see the movie because there's, there's an entire story that surrounds this whole issue. And it affects every single American right now. And I mean, right now, I man, mean, the, what, what we're facing now. So it's a very, and I tell you, the people that are that have that have seen it are 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 affected by it, and um, you know, because it's it's has that kind of a of a powerful sentiment of uh, of where we are right now. Because ISIS hasn't gone away. Now, going in with Trump, one of the things, and I and I talk about my meetings with Trump. I get into the weeds a little bit, and I talk about the different things that he and I spoke about. So it's fascinating insight and, and insider insight into me and the conversations that I had with Trump about not only uh, one, his thoughts about becoming the president, but then all, you know, when we went inside of the White House itself and um, and I lay out some of these things. And there's also some some uh, some things in there about uh, the inside baseball of inside the White House and those that that were threatened by me inside the White House, the establishment, okay, the establishment, wow. because, because the establishment likes things the way they are. And, uh, and again, I'm going to kind of leave right. it there, Carl, um, because okay. I want people to go okay. see the whole, to be able to connect all these dots that we have, uh, that, that we are living and breathing right now that I, that I went through. And it's, and it's sort of, it answers the question, why did they fear Flynn? Why did they, why do they have to get this guy out of there so quickly? Um, and and people that have followed my story really closely, they, they generally understand that. But even in this movie, I, I mentioned a couple of things that I've never spoken about before, ever. Not on any podcast, not on any book I've written, and not in any article that I've posted. Uh, There's some things that are going to come out in this movie that do come out in this movie. And, and, it, and they're like people – like I, I watched right. the – I watch the film. I'm watching the people as they're watching the film, and when some of those pieces come out, I can hear in the in the I, I can hear people in the in the in the auditoriums or the theaters going like, "Holy shit!" You know, like, "Oh my god!" Or I didn't know, you know. 
And that those are those moments, excuse me for my Irish, but those are those moments when you, you know that people need to know this stuff. Hmm. Yeah, we certainly do. I, I, I got to tell you, uh, it, it is such an honor to be able to sit here and speak with you. I've not seen the film. I'm looking forward to seeing the film. I'm going to make sure that I uh, that I purchase it because I want to make sure uh, that uh, whatever monies you guys need, uh, you, you get. And yeah. for all of you in the listening audience, I'm going to encourage you uh, to do the same. And and quite frankly, we need to build a parallel economy. Uh, exactly. We need to be able to support people like General Michael Flynn, because the truth is, I mean, the, it's, you know, General Flynn, I, I, I hate to I hate to go sideways here, but I was just reading this story about this NPR uh, journalist, if you will, you know, inside of NPR for 25 years. And he was just talking about how woke it was. And we all we all knew that. Uh, but yeah. but he even spoke about in recent years how, you know, he was they were told to shut up about certain things. And, uh, you know, yeah. basically they could, uh, you know, when it came to trans issue, all this stuff, uh, Israel. Yeah, and so Hamas. Let, me, let me let me jump in on you because I don't mean to cut you off because I know we got no, 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 that much time. I'll come back at, at another time with your audience, your great audience. So NPR, National Public Radio, they receive over five hundred million dollars. It's like five hundred and thirty four million dollars, I think, if I got. I had that number right, but they, they receive that much money from taxpayers and they're, and they're lying to us. They're, you know, it's an organization that is, you know, they, they put out an agenda that is a woke agenda and I, you know, we're paying for it. So that's NPR. We, we, people have to be, you know, they have to use good judgment. They have to use good discernment about what it is that they believe. And, you know, and, and, and again, I don't care whether people believe me or not, but what I, what I'm, what I believe is what I say. And, you know, people can take it for what it's worth and they can they can throw it out or they can go, wow, I heard this guy Flynn say this, man. And you look at my background, that carries a lot of weight. I'm not just some guy, you know, off the street. You know, I, I served, I, I mean, I served in, in some really, really critical positions in our U.S. government. And and I have a I have an extraordinary, it's humbling, okay, and I'm blessed. But I have an extraordinary set of experiences. And so... If I say something, it carries a lot of weight. And I know that. So I'm very careful about the things that I do say. Yeah, you're absolutely you're absolutely oh. right. And that. Yes. And, that, and, and that's why you need to go to, go see the movie. Yeah. Flynn, yeah. deliver the truth. Whatever, I mean, I just leave uh, I'm, I'm going back to you let because me, we, I know you. we I know I know we have not that much time. So I want to you had some other questions. I'll try to answer them quickly. All right, two, we we have two and a half minutes here, General. I mean, given your vast array of, uh, of knowledge when it comes to the deep deep state, in your opinion, are there some agencies, are there some positions that we can do without, that we should do without? Quite frankly, absolutely. There's 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 government reform that must happen in uh, in an administration, and in my case, I'm, I'm all for, I'm all in on on Donald J. Trump. You know, he's already, and I could have my own, you know. I can have my own attitudes, and I talk about him in the movie. But, but uh, under good, strong leadership, and I think it's, I think right now it's, it's what we in this period of history, Donald J. Trump has proven as a president. We need to get him back in there, and we need, we need. I call it severe government reform. So there's absolutely there's, there's. It's not just people; it's the structures that we're facing. And I, I talk about some of this in the movie too. I mean, I do, I do address this. I do address specific agencies and departments and activities that we are we have in our government that require that so yes would you be willing to accept a position under donald j trump as nsa director again you know i've been through that process i i again this is another part you know it's fascinating because you really the fact that you haven't seen the movie is very telling for me uh but but because in the movie i talk specifically to two questions two things and they are related to what you just asked me. I've been through that process. I've been asked by a president a couple of times to serve, different presidents to serve in different capacities. So I know what the process takes. And I, you know, my fiber, my uh, makeup is about service. I, that's all I've known all my whole life. I was born on a, on a military base, you know? So I, I hung around with my dad when he was a sergeant in the army going around in different bases and stuff. I, I, I know service, I know how to serve. And that's what I want to be able to do. I'm serving now as right. you're serving in different capacities. So, All right. Yes. Well, G 
I, I got to tell you this, you know, I, I, and, and honestly, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I scheduled time to watch the movie last night, and I'm not going to lie to you, General. I, I went ahead and Sorry, fell asleep, uh... and now I want to punch myself in the face. Uh, but the good news is I'm going to watch this movie, and I'm going to make sure as many as people as possible watch this movie and hear about this movie. And all I can tell you is that I am so appreciative. Uh, we That's only great. have about 15 seconds left of your service that you've done and what you continue to do. I'm sorry for what you've gone through, but I'm so glad that God has brought you out on the other side. 10 seconds to respond. Well, first of all, Carl, thank you very much. I want to thank your team, Gabe, your producer, good guy. I mean, thank you guys. Thank your audience and God bless you all. God bless America. And, and I'll come back on again. All right. Look forward to 